somebody like Paul Ryan accuses you basically of being a liar, that, that's a pretty serious allegation. Well, it is a serious allegation. We take the entire question seriously from the start. Uh, as I said when I began, uh, the improper uh, criteria used to, to uh, highlight uh, organizations for investigation just by their name uh, was a mistake. I apologize to anybody who had their uh, applications held up needlessly. Everybody needs to be confident that the IRS is going to treat them fairly, no matter who they are, Republicans, Democrats, whatever organization they belong to. Shouldn't someone be blamed for the, this antiquated, awful system that allowed official records to simply disappear? Well, I think uh, somebody, uh, the IG is investigating all of the issues about uh, the uh, hard drive crash. Uh, my approach when I parachute into these things is to try to fix the problems rather, rather than try to figure out how to blame. And some time ago, I asked for us to review exactly how the email system runs and whether we couldn't convert uh, to a more searchable, more retainable email system. I've also uh, said we need to respond to the concerns of the archivist, who came out with a very interesting suggestion recently that for agencies struggling moving forward into an electronic system, they should take the senior people and make sure all of those records and emails are preserved. I should emphasize that all emails are not official records. So if an email is lost, it doesn't mean we've lost an official record. Why shouldn't taxpayers use the crashed hard drive excuse when undergoing an, I, an IRS audit? Uh, a number of them already have done that. And the question has been, is there a dual standard? And as I've said, the IRS has 24,000 Lois Lerner emails from this period. We historically, if a taxpayer has lost electronic records, have said, if you have other indications and evidence of what went on, we'll take that from you. It's if you lose a document, it doesn't mean you lose the argument. We actually work with taxpayers to say, we'll look at other evidence, uh, like the 24,000 emails, and if we can find any evidence to support your case, and in fact, if the circumstances support your case, we'll support you and you won't have any problem. Now, you're a Democrat. You've given money to Democratic causes, Democratic candidates, including the President of the United States. And so the suggestion is you're not going to be objective in this kind of investigation. Reassure the American people that you're not going to let your partisanship interfere with this investigation. Uh, I've never been a partisan op operative, a political operative. I was actually asked by the Bush administration to come in and work on Freddie Mac. But you did contribute to the Obama campaign. Uh, I've contributed to campaigns for the last 40 or 50 years. Uh, many of them friends. Uh, at this point in my career, uh, it's not my intention at all to play games with the Congress. My goal is to help restore people's faith in a critical institution for the country, the IRS. As I said, people need to feel comfortable that it's not a politicized agency, that it treats people fairly no matter who they are. Are yeah. you uh, happy you took this job? Uh, this job has been perhaps more interesting than uh, I agreed I kid that I should have read the fine print of the contract more closely. If you had to do it over again, would you have said to the president, no thanks? Uh, no, I'd take it in a minute. If you believe in public service, this agency is critical. It collects most of the money the government spends, and it touches virtually every uh, American and every taxpayer. And I think if you believe in public service, the opportunity to try to help it through this time, to restore the faith of the uh, public, uh, that it is, in fact, non-political, that its job is simply tax administration, uh, was too important an opportunity to pass. And, and